What's going on everybody? My name is Taylor Oglesill and welcome back to another Taylor Made Creations video. In today's build I'm going to show you how to build this farm style table. Uh, wasn't too hard of a build and uh, I love the way it turned out with the, the way the legs look all the way up to the top and uh, looks real nice and easily sits six people. Uh, so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the build. So a couple weeks back I built a table with a good friend of mine and he left me the extra wood from the project and I couldn't really store all that wood in my shop so I went ahead and cut the pieces for me to build my own table. So unfortunately I don't have video of me cutting these pieces out. But right here I'm marking the center of the 2x6 and then marking an inch from each edge in order to draw a 3.5 by 3.5 inch square in the very center of the 2x6 because that's where I'm going to put a 4x4 post in order to start putting the legs together. I couldn't think of a much easier way to do this other than to set the 4x4 post on the ground and then set the 2x6 on top putting the 4x4 into that square I drew. Then I pre-drilled four 3 inch screws just to make it easier to cinch it in Next, I flipped over the piece and repeated it on the other side by doing the same process. When that was done, I was left with two basic leg structures or a giant sign that says hi. Next, I prepared the angled 4x4 post to be assembled onto the legs. I did this by drilling a number 6 countersink hole and then putting a 3 inch screw on one side and a 2 inch on the other. I did this in order when I connect the 4x4 post to the leg mount that I wanted the 2 inch screw to go to the 2x6 so it wouldn't penetrate to the bottom and the 3 inch could go into the 4x4 post in the center of the leg. Luckily, since I had pre-cut all these pieces, assembly goes pretty fast when you pre-drill and put screws in you just put it together and before you know it you've got two legs ready to be assembled onto the table. I followed up the leg assembly with filling the holes with wood putty. I went ahead and did this now so it could be drying while I assembled the tabletop and then be ready for sanding when it comes time for stain. Next I cut two 2x4s to the correct length in order to connect each leg to each other and to hold the weight of the table. I connected these 2x4s to the legs by drilling two pocket holes on each side and then to get the correct spacing on where I wanted them connected to the legs. I marked five inches from each outer edge. When working by yourself, you always have to be creative on ways to assemble things by using clamps or various items around the shop. So I used a spare two by four and clamp here to build a little shelf in order to set the two by four on so I can cinch it in place. In order to improve the look of the table as well as the structure, I went with a 4x4 post to span between each leg. I also used the same method of mounting it as I did the 2x4s. To attach the 4x4 post to the legs, I started off by drawing a 3 16th hole at an angle towards the center of the post on the other side. I did this in order to prevent any cracking when I screwed in the big bolts. The bolts I decided to go with were ledger lock structural wood screws. They're 5 inches long. They have a great aesthetic appeal and they hold the structure very well and I'll have a link to them in the description below. Now that the table frame was complete I could start working on the tabletop. I started off by ripping all the 2x6's to be 5 inches wide. I did this by ripping 0.25 inches off each edge because when the wood comes from the factory or the sawmill they have rounded edges and if you put those together for a tabletop you're gonna have little gaps in the table and that's where food and salt will begin to collect in order to prevent that you can you can rip the outer edge off to get you a nice clean corner so when you connect it you have a nice clean tabletop afterwards I was left with nine five inch wide two by sixes and enough shims to last me a lifetime Next, I began laying out all the 2x6s and getting them in the correct order I wanted to put them together. This part's really important because you want to make sure that you alternate grain up versus grain down. If you put the tabletop together with all the grain facing up or all the grain facing down, it'll begin to bow over time.
Once I got all the 2x6s in the correct order that I wanted them, I went ahead and numbered them so I wouldn't get them out of order. Instead of cutting all the 2x6s down to the correct size and then connecting them together, I like to connect the boards together and then cut them to the size I need. So here I'm marking 3 inches from the edge, and that's just the general area of where I'm going to use my circular saw to cut them down to the right size. Then I marked every 12 inches down the boards, and that's where I'm going to put all my pocket holes. And then once I got to the other end, I made another general line of where I needed to cut these boards off. Once I had marked every 12 inches on the boards, I was able to start drilling my pocket holes in order to start putting these boards together. I made sure to align the 3 inch reference line that I drew earlier, and then I used my Craig clamp to make sure the boards were flush, and then a trigger clamp to push them together as I screwed each screw and just repeated that process down to each screw. Once I attached all of the 2x6s together with the pocket screws, I was able to take out my Bora straight edge guide and run my circular saw along the guide. I tell you, it sure does make your ends cut a lot straighter if you use a straight edge guide when using a circular saw. Once I'd cut each end of the tabletop, it was now ready to put on the header board. So I went over to the miter saw and cut two header boards to the correct length. Then I followed up with putting some pocket holes into it and attaching it to the end. Anytime I build a table, I like to round the edges, mainly because it looks good and also when you rest your arms on it, it won't hurt as much and be a lot more comfortable. So I took out my router and put a 1 8 round over bit and rounded out the edges on the top side and the bottom side. Now that the assembly of the table was complete, I could now sand and get it ready for stain. So I started off with an 80 grit sandpaper on the top of the table and the legs and then finished off with a 220 grit to make it real nice and smooth and ready to accept stain. It was finally time to start staining the table. So I went with a Minwax dark walnut finish. This is probably my favorite stain which I use the most because I really like the way it looks. And also when I apply the stain I like to use these little foam pads that I pick up from Home Depot. They work really well, they hold a lot of stain, so I'll, I'll put a link to them in the description below. Most of the time on any project you're going to encounter small cracks where you need to get stain in there where you can't really fit your rag, so a quick tip I always give is to get a q-tip, soak it up with stain and just dab it into the crack. So my favorite part finally arrived, and that's when I finally get to apply that dark walnut finish to the tabletop. It's really cool to see my hard work pay off and watch that table transform into my finished product. So let's just sit back and watch. To finish off the table, I went with a Minwax polycrylic finish, and all I did was paint it over the stain, and the main reason I did this is just to protect the table from use over time. The very last step was to connect the tabletop to the legs, so I went with four L brackets that I used in the inside corner of those top 2x4s, and that's just mainly to give it a nice secure fit and when you need to move it around from room to room or move to another house you can disconnect it very easily and transport it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this build. It was a pretty simple project and if you aren't already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to put out videos as regularly as I can. Also if you're interested in purchasing plans for this uh, just leave me a comment below and also if you are like the tools I'm using and materials uh, and you want to get some of your own, I'll leave uh, links to those in the description below. Other than that, uh, thanks for watching and uh, until next time.